Okay, guys, how we doing? Welcome back to the Chaos Vibration. This is Damien, as always, and today we have a very special last-minute guest. Hopefully, there's not going to be too many technology-based issues because it's Mercury Retrograde. We're having some audio back problems and camera problems. Let me try and turn my mic down here some. And that should be a little bit better. But anyway... In today's video, we want to have a last minute guest and fan of the channel, Brett Bernhoff, on, on. We'll let him introduce himself in a minute. Who has to come on? So I just want to thank him for checking out the channel first off and his support and his willingness to come on. We, he wants to talk a little bit about technomancy, paganism, shamanism, and some of the normal things we talk about on this channel authentic approaches to magic, future of magic. And with that, we're going to turn it right over to Brett. So, how are you doing, Brett? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Good. Good. Uh, yeah, it's been a hot day in the Pacific Northwest uh, region of the United States, but uh, in, in in direct alignment with our conversation, technology is keeping my apartment cool, so it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a good day. I would say. Well, it got warm here quick in the east. I'll certainly say, or humid rather, went from uh, 40 to almost summertime already. I certainly miss the spring and the fall and the transitionary months. It seems like we don't get too much of those. Not anymore. Have a favorite season? Off-topic question, or? Uh, that's a great question. It's either spring or fall. Uh, I would probably say spring. Yeah, yeah. Definitely agree there. Definitely miss it. I'll also, uh, find that's the best time to set New Year's intentions. You're just too depressed, burnt out from the holidays there. Astrology aside, I just think when spring comes out, we're hopeful. We're thinking about potential. Want to do some content there this year and going to be a little bit late. But as you know, you create content. So, so many ideas, only so much time. Yeah. Especially when you have responsibilities. Yes, I totally understand that. Right. Right. As we were saying, you know, podcasting is a labor of love, the editing, all the dead shoots, the scripts, the going through it. So with that being said, before we get into techno magic or anything, why don't you just tell us about yourself, your channel here? Sure. Uh, my channel is, it was intended originally to be private, but I made it public or started building publicly so that I could have a little, uh, frankly, a little SEO juice for my name. Uh, when people Google my name, uh, my YouTube channel comes up and I wanted to kind of express who I am through YouTube uh, with my channel. I've had channels in the past where I did spiritual content, uh, a number of, I guess you could say, uh, uh, technology and slightly conspiracy related topics. But my channel nowadays is about music. My channel now is about music and uh techno shamanism technology the future of programming uh, and really where technomancy is headed which i feel is upon us and that is something that i have fallen deeply into i i entered the occult space about 10 years ago and it it emerged very clearly in my eyes that there was a a a burgeoning techno renaissance similar to the 1990s and that there was something happening on the internet but it was not being spearheaded spearheaded and it, it was not being uh talked about very often but it was happening kind of subtly underground and that is where i found my my real uh source of influence and i want to say power but uh agency is with technology and magic is just when I picked up the vibe that there was something happening on the internet again, similar to what happened 20, 30 years ago, that caught my attention. And uh, it's been gangbusters ever since. Okay, okay. Um, well, one question I have right now is what happened 20 to 30 years ago? Um, just to elaborate on, because this whole concept is very new to me, techno magic. So I'm excited because I'm coming to this for fresh with uh, fresh eyes and no existing knowledge base sure 20 30 years ago was the 90s and the 90s were a period of time of uh it, it, it great inspiration is one way to say uh the 90s existed as but it was more about innovation and uh, forward movement and optimism and uh, possibilities and and brand new technologies that were bringing uh 
hope to the to the human species that we were going to transcend into something much more uh, comfortable and uh, human oriented, uh, generally beneficial for our well being was going to be the uh, outcome of the internet, and with that came the magic community who thinks in an abstract way as it is already. And I think the two married very naturally. And uh, I, I think about the nineties a lot as a child, I was born in 86 and I grew up in the nineties, but I was not an adult in the nineties. That said, I did observe there was a lot of, uh, a lot of new doors opening in the nineties. And I'm, I'm not exactly certain. And I would love to learn but I'm not exactly certain why the nineties were so in particularly, so particularly special, but there was something about the nineties that opened the gateways of today and uh, not saying that all technology and all magic on technology or with technology is positive or uh, something I would do, but what we see today is a product of what happened 30 years ago. So what we are seeing today will be a product will be the Genesis of uh, 2030, 2040. And what happens today is very important because I feel, I, I observe that there is a, uh, a very youthful and very vital audience for techno magic who is, whom are independently and collectively coming to, uh, what's the word I want to use? Agency, fruition. Uh, they're coming into age. They're coming they're coming into their own power and agency. And it's something that I was kind of surprised by when I first noticed, but uh, it's growing all the time. I, I, I work with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I work with OSINT technologies, which is open source intelligence gathering technologies that monitor the web for particular keywords and the rise of, <clears throat> the rise of techno paganism is everywhere. And it's being recognized by all parties. And right now is a wonderful time, a very important time to kind of cement that not only is it happening, not only are you not alone if you are practicing technomancy, but there are sophisticated resources and large communities, believe it or not, that are forming under the guise of technology and magic. So. It just we're at a, we're at another nexus point in history of magic in the history of magic, where um, anything is possible. So it's just it's it's a crossroads is what it is. Okay, okay, um, definitely well said. Before we get to techno magic, um, do you mind if we just talk about the nineties a little bit? Share some insights there and just some um, views on technology. Is that all right with you? We're deviating from our script a little bit here, but this inspired some observations I want to make. Too, if that's all right with you. 100%. We can do whatever you want to do. Um, well, first off, uh, I was a little surprised, not in a bad way, because I was born 87, so I don't really consider myself a 90s child for that same reason. Um, Because we were kind of kids growing up to the 90s, but I guess, like, you obviously mentioned the internet, things like that. I can see where you're going with that now. Obviously, even we overlook things like 3D graphics, Super Nintendo, or N64, all that, but we were definitely in that genesis. Um, one thing I just found about the 90s was looking back at it as someone who never really resonated with what was out when I was 15, whether it be music or movies, I just found the 90s to be a cultural um, renaissance and just sheerly ahead of its time. Like, for example, we're in all this feminine power stuff and I love it, but it it seems very forced to me. So just a cheesy example, I was talking with somebody about like, remember the show Buffy the Vampire Slayer? I it's do. Like, they just, everything was done so well. It was so natural. And it, I just think personally, it needed some time to really let it fester and see where it's going. Um, 90s was also seems to be a big time for the uh, chaos magic movement. I think the internet really is what set that off that realization kind of that is what um, i had as well yes for sure now do you feel we're headed into what i would call a techno te technology based wire where we're not oh. really sure where we're headed um with crypto bitcoin different jobs we're in this real transition 
um, transition state. That is 100% uh, what I would agree with. We are in a transitional state. That is something that is recognized by that is recognized across the so-called board or spectrum of, of human opinions. We are in a moment of time when uh, the, the seeds that were laid and the seeds that are being laid or planted are uh, of, of the utmost importance to be the right ones, to be healthy seeds, if you will, because what is done today is going to shape another 2000 years of human history. And that, that is my opinion, but uh, I think that right now we are in extraordinary times. We are very fortunate to be alive and well and active in today's world, in my opinion. Okay, sure. okay. It's definitely a scary time. There's a lot going on. No matter what, it'll be a very unique time in history. Um, do you have any opinions on AI or anything you want to inform the audience on there? Because I know that's a thing that's getting a lot of mixed reviews. I don't have any knowledge on this, so. Sure, I use AI every day. I use AI for work and personal uh, objectives, both chat GPT and uh, text to image creation. Uh, I use chat GPT for creating image prompts that create the images that I want specifically or, or more elaborate images that I want for, uh, for graphic design experimentation and web development experimentation and just really for seeing something on my computer screen that I can't see anywhere else. So in terms of AI, uh, it's, it's already reached a certain level of maturity that is uh, profound and whether or not it goes forward into future generations of sophistication and power and ability depends on, um, frankly, the courts, because there's a lot of lawsuits that are coming down the pike on, uh, in terms of uh, the implications of AI. There are some people who want AI to continue full force, and there are other people who want uh, AI to, to stop, and there's everything in between. So there's... We're in a, like you said, we're in a very, very dynamic time. And AI is, in my opinion, the, the quintessential technology of our time because it, it removes so much of the burden from the human species to do basic work. But at the same time, it takes that basic work from, human, from the human species and gives it to a computer. So it's, it, even, even the work that I do, which is computer programming, it, it, there, there is a direct threat to my employment through AI. But I still use AI every day because it is, um, it is, it's like a mentor that I don't have to pay very much for. And mentors uh, can be very expensive, if you will. So it's, yeah. Yeah, um, you brought up so many great points. And just one meta thing I wanna hear, I would like to tackle here before we even get into the magic is, I know at least by me, the um, spiritual community is so polarized on technology is amazing, or it's, you know, not spiritual. And I find this to be nonsense. I'm not gonna say computers are magic, but there is something magical about them. Um, it's a it's a great metaphor and it makes, you know, space for things like this, like these conversations, these abilities to connect people to share their ideas. One thing I love about YouTube is I've been able to give myself an education on YouTube too, which is, uh, you know, most people look at cats and dumb things, but there's also, I want to remind people, there's beyond me or anyone, there are MIT professors that upload their lectures on YouTube. So I, I I think it's, I think it's really beautiful and in, in what you make of it. I don't understand the um, dichotomy at all. But are there any specific skills with that being said, you think people would be wise to familiarize themselves with regardless of any achievement or results? Because I got started late with the computers myself. My family was on food stamps at that age. So I was always catching up with that and kind of Miss that, but anything cutting edge or ahead of the curve you would advise people start familiarizing themselves with? Sure. Um, yes, I would say if they if if someone wants to truly understand technology and have command over a general purpose computing device, it is to learn a to learn the basics of programming, which believe believe me or not is possible by anyone because I taught myself how to program computers. I started when I was 30 years old. I'm 36 today. 
almost 37. So it's almost been seven years since I started programming, but uh, it, it, it's, it's accessible with, with the advances in, in, in technology and the costs of high performance technology being relatively affordable. Uh, it, does, it doesn't have to be a new generation processor to be fast and advanced. I don't have a new processor, but my point is, is that programming, if you learn even the basics of programming, you will have an intuitive under, a better intuitive understanding of technology and that will bond you to the technium, as uh, Kevin Kelly calls it, the body of technology that uh, that is emerging. And what it wants, as the book that I'm referring to is Kevin Kelly's book called What Technology Wants. And the answer to that question is manifestation. It wants to manifest in, in physical presence. And if you agree with that, if you're sympathetic to that, uh, programming is just even reading a, a blog article on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, or Python, which are languages for programming for the internet, you can get a sense of what is involved. Just seeing the code itself opens the mind a little to what, what computers are and how what is happening today is not the, the technology taking charge, but the humans are using the technology to take charge. The humans are, are not losing control. It's, uh, it's a change in power dynamics. That's one way of putting it. Well, that's, you brought up the word manifest. I think anyone that's watching this channel, despite its various meanings and interpretations, um, I think that's something we're all seeking to do, right? So th there's no surprise there. And without making this a pop magic shoot, I just find that interesting because I know when I work with those spirits, they're kind of saying something very similar. Look, we want to play here too. There's the technology. Um, and for the people that hate on it, I'm not the justification i just find this interesting because i always say do we not understand the information model of magic like superman whatever you throw them on netflix the computer they're an information byte floating around in dead space i know some magician argue the internet is a portal to the astral i don't have any exact opinion but um what i want to bring up here is i'd imagine that knowledge of programming would cross train and make you a better magician and vice versa. An example I'm gonna give is, I, I, I've been starting to look into Kabbalah, was doing a shoot on that with the law of attraction today. Yes, that sounds crazy, but I was like, instead of the ancient claptrap, I was like, oh, it's basically a schematic, like an electrical plan or a blueprint. So are there any parallels there that you came into that you'd like to share with the audience or? Sure. Uh, if in terms of programming and Kabbalah, I would say that uh, if you want to look, if you want to look at paradigms and schematics mm -hmm. for building logic that results in outcomes, uh, they're they're almost identical. You're dealing. Obviously, there are differences. There are, there are differences between uh, a two thousand three thousand year old tradition that has been well weathered and uh, well tested versus new technology that's less than 60 or 70 years old or 80 years old mm -hmm. altogether. But the two reflect each other uh, very appropriately, if you will. In my opinion, uh, the two are both malleable enough and comprehensive is the, probably the more important word, comprehensive enough to take into account all intents and purposes. So. Uh, I'm not as familiar with Kabbalah as I am with technomancy, but with my understanding of Kabbalah, it is that it is a, uh, a processor of reality and that it can be used to create outcomes uh, far beyond the individual's normal capacity, which is, the, which is very similar to programming. Uh, you can create a website that gets 2 billion views a month and you don't have to do anything but other than just build it once. That, that is very, very affluent, and that is what Kabbalah, in my understanding of it, uh, allows in part. Um, side note, audience, we're actually relaxing, having a couple drinks we've been working at it, so forgive me if I um, worded that poorly. It doesn't have to be Kabbalah, just any interesting 
analogies or realizations you came to about how one speaks to the other. Another example that helps is I was putzing with Replica when it came out just to better understand how to work servitors. And while the Replica failed, um, I came away with a much deeper understanding of how to work with servitors. Any, any little random tidbits there you'd like to share or maybe number programming numerology? I'm not that savvy, so forgive me if I kind of just rambling here. No, you're, you're on the exact correct path. Uh, I have used technology, the internet, and in particular social media to create thought forms that turned into egregors that have their own independent uh, autonomy. I, cre I created a subreddit that fed an egregor that now exists on its own that I communicate with whenever it shows up in my life. Uh, there, there is very few differences there are quite a f there there are there are only a few differences between technology and traditional magic using technology for magic and using papyrus scrolls for magic there are very f there are only a few differences and uh, it's i guess the nugget that i will express is that with social media it is extraordinarily faster and extraordinarily more potent uh, to create thought forms that are fed and ultimately capable of independent autonomous action if that's what you program them, if, if, if that's what you intend for them to do or be or how they are to act um, the internet has multiplied magnified uh, human intention and that that is I think a, a quintessential way of describing how we relate to our technologies it's magnified everything well i'm not big into defining magic but i would definitely say technology is a form of magic i know other content creators i enjoy will basically say i said this about pop magic or whatever once again like essentially you're using a wand if you're playing diablo right commanding demons on a black screen for analogy's sake but, um, so I, I would say it's there back to the simple fact what are codes and spells you're putting in alphanumerical symbols and something creating differences in consciousness and producing an effect and te technology probably more than magic or more, or more quickly than magic will show you if you did not input the right commands it's going to glitch pretty quickly and it can help you appreciate what an intricated system it is which is something that's really just getting left out of the modern teachings uh, i do agree this there there are two points that i could make that i would like to make in, in that in regards to that comment yes i Please. i genuinely agree that it is that it is excluded for most modern teachings but it is the vehicle for most modern teachings so it is something that we as a species or as a community who are who is interested in in magic use to learn and and stay present with what is happening among our favorite youtubers twitter follower or twitter uh twitter accounts or even blogs or any any sort of communication device that is modern we are using that technology to be magical in our in our current world yeah yeah I, I definitely think so. Um, the only other point I'd like to add before we get more into techno magic and stuff, future magic is, and I'll give you an example here. It's going to be wordy. Do you find that your opportunities with technology or programming are big clues on where you need to improve at the magical level? That's a great question. Um, I get the answer is yes, and I'm thinking about how many times that has happened. The, the the instantaneous response on social media to to any sort of communication whether that's a sigil or a tweet or anything of any kind is is a training ground that i don't think humanity has had in the physical pr in, in physical presence uh either ever or for for thousands of years depending on your opin opinion of atlantis uh it just depends on uh uh, the speed is is instantaneous, and that is something that, frankly, I rely on for my magic is the instantaneous speed of response to magical intent. So yes. Okay. Okay. Anything else? It's just like an example I found is like when I'm going where I'm struggling at the gym. 
is always a clue on where I'm going wrong on magic. If I'm rushing between sets, it means I'm doing too much magic at once. If I'm putting things off, probably putting things off at the magical level. Not always absolutely. I just find these things interesting. And that, to me, just speaks to, once again, everything um, being interconnected there. So... But um, moving on, what is technomancy, and where did this come from? That is a great question. Uh, I've I have done my sh my uh, range of research and experience with technomancy. The origins of the word technomancy implies divination with technology or divination with techni, which is a skill set. <clears throat> And that is as old as Rome and, and Greece, or, or Italy and Greece. Uh, but in terms of the modern context, I think technomancy really emerged with Eric Davis's book, Technosis, which is the, which is the default book that I was recommended on our occult on Reddit uh, over and over and over by people who have read it and, and lived that life for the past 20 years at the time uh, when I first started magic. Uh, Eric Davis's technosis was sort of the, in my experience, was the was the uh, keystone to opening that it is possible. But more more importantly, there are resources online today which I'm happy more than happy to share, which I am not affiliated with, but have been instrumental in opening my mind's eye to what technology can do. Technomancy emerged from the desire to keep magic alive. It it was a it was a desire to take uh, take what is quintessential, take what is essential to the uh, spiritual and power of the the power of spirituality and keeping it in the modern world. And that was what happened during the 90s when people saw opportunities. And those opportunities are arising again today. Uh, it, it's like it's 1991, and it's just beginning again. And if we do it right, it'll be 1993, and we, in the, in the, in the, in the sense of it, it will peak. It will uh, emerge fully out into the public. Um, it's, we're, just, we're just at such a pivotal time right now. I think so, and it can go either way. You brought up Crossroads before, which has been a big metaphor and synchronicity in my life. I don't want to go into Crossroads spirits here and, and get off topics, but uh, I think so. Now, one thing um, that this isn't quite technomancy, one observation I'd like to add is that a lot of people use the tarot and all this ancient stuff to divine, and I, I think that's well and great, but um, for me, low magic isn't just getting results. It's under using everyday things to make very powerful conclusions about the direction of humanity. We we're talking about the 90s, and I'm not disagreeing. I think in a lot of ways, humanity is also in some ways in the 80s, and one of the big clues for me in that is the music industry. Like, I, I'm a little bit biased. I don't want to go on a prep rally here, but I, I'm waiting for the next big punk rock boom the way we're, the world's going, you know? But, um, which, you know, that, that came out after the discotheque of the 70s, right? There's our pattern. And then we went to the 80s. I'm going to argue music right now is very much kind of 80s reboot synth wave, weird stuff. And wondering when, you know, rock and roll is going to come and field strip everything back down to its bare fundamentals. But um, I definitely do see those patterns there. Any predictions just based on the direction of technology that we haven't discussed or anything specific any bizarre hunches you have you know i do i do i i am direct how do i say this uh, i am actively involved as best i can be remotely in the underground music community and i would say that right now it is clear to me that emerging technology is revitalizing genres that have been uh, quote unquote dead since the 90s like drum and bass is my favorite but that, mm. that that doesn't exclude any kind of jazz that includes all kinds of blues jazz rock um r r&b all that stuff quote unquote stuff is um it's 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 being reignited just like everyone and everything else 
and it is i think for the first time having the capacity to enter the mainstream which it attempted during the 90s and did to a certain extent achieve but it was only temporary and with a few instances i think we're about to if if we play our cards right if i if i and the millions of others who are involved with uh, technology and music, quote unquote, play our cards right. It will it, it will be the mainstream because it, in my opinion, it's so good, but it is uh, reflective of what's available, and that that is what it did during the nineties. It re it reflected what was available, and at that time there wasn't very much data. There wasn't very many input output devices. Today they're abundant. And it just takes the right initiative to create the next blockbuster anything media-wise uh, to change the world. And it's it's very sensitive. The world is very sensitive right now. And that's not a, a positive or a negative thing. That's, in my opinion and observations, a statement about state. Um, we are open to new opportunities. And if, if musicians, artists... Uh, listeners, producers, and distributors, anyone involved in music was to make the right moves, we would have a new generation of culture. Uh, because, mind, oh, go ahead. Would you mind elaborating on what this, th those moves are, or is that just a um, hypothetical thing? You don't have to elaborate. It just got me curious here. No, it, I, I, I can elaborate. And it, it would be to it would be to become more aggressive, in my opinion. It would be to become more uh, uh, forward moving and willing to take risks. Those kinds of movements have held the underground together for, for 50, 60 years, but the underground, if you want to call it that can come into the mainstream, if you want to call it that and become the common vernacular, the common vocabulary of humanity as it did in London in 1992 and 93. London was the, the epicenter of, of drum and bass and so many other genres of music. And it was because of technology that those genres were born. The DJ was born because of technology that matured in Jamaica. And we are able to now, today, we are able today to enjoy the fruits of those labors as common default. If we, if we as in the magically, technically, musically, artistically inclined folk, are willing to make the more the more powerful movements i am absolutely certain that an audience of mass would form around that so i think the answer to your question is to be more aggressive and it's not to be attacking it's just to be more promoting and more confident and more willing to look to new places to distribute and more places to find inspiration from because that 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 is what we are doing today is we are looking everywhere at least i am and i know there are many 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 other people that are doing the same looking everywhere for the truth for inspiration clarity uh, opportunities to express ourselves and that is exactly what uh, technology in our modern world makes explicitly clear is that there is this chance right now to do that oh yeah I mean, uh, maybe I'm coming to it from my own angle, but it seems like some of the greatest innovation comes from human suffering or even a desire to start a podcast or go on a spiritual journey, right? Like, let's be honest, people don't switch up their spiritual or life purpose when everything's working for them, usually. Um, you know, just a different one is, you know, the chaos magician always spoke about, or let me back up, I don't want to go pure George Lucas here, but I think... You know, the early works of Peter J. Carroll, he was getting to a time where technology couldn't really harness what, and while I don't identify, um, the spirit of, let's just say, chaos was getting at, that impulsive, unbridled, or as I like to say, not aggressive, unapologetic creativity. You know, they, they speak about, oh, ancient shaman used to drum around in a circle, and I think that's cool, but, I, you, you know, I have visions the day will come where there will be people doing like EDM raves on Molly to evoke this or that or that spirit or things along those lines or, uh, you know, like the raves, kiss me, whatever. I, I, I don't know the artist, but I definitely went to some drum and bass raves. You know, you know the scene. Like, 
that is a trans state. You could easily po post a sigil on your head, get a million kisses, you know, activate it that way. And I say, you know, let's not promote drugs or stupid decision making, but I say, why the hell not? And that's what people need. And that's what magic needs to do is evolve because it's gone for the longest time without evolving. The closest thing we came to was chaos magic in the new age. And I don't think these things have really found their purpose yet. They're still growing too. And I think technology is helping that along the, the ideas with this. Is there anything you want to add there? You want to move on? Uh, when you, when you comment on the, uh, the, the trance state of rave, if it basically, uh, or of groups coming together to celebrate music from my experiences and observations, that is exactly what uh, is happening thought forms are cre are being created uh at events uh quote unquote psychedelic events or or just uh ecstatic events where where bass heavy music is played those kinds of events and those kinds of gatherings are creating thought forms anyways if magic was intentionally done which ha which is being done and has been done but if it was done on a larger scale uh, outside of for for say Burning Man, or any similar uh, gathering, we would have cultural, personal, and societal planetary transformation within ten years. Oh, I, I, I think so, and we are at the um, the mass of it. One beauty about technology, I've realized, is there's always a place to go now for somebody. Sure, it has its deficits, but. You know, there always is. You may not be the biggest podcaster ever, but that's really not what it's about, as you know, you've been in that game. And when you let go of that, it generally gets easier. Um, but moving on, if you don't mind, not um, we, we spoke a little bit about books exploring techno magic. We covered that it involves internet and social media. Um, are there any techniques or ways or traditional magic techniques you do to bridge or connect to technology? Anything yes. practical there? Okay. Absolutely. Uh, the audio, the audio is my audio and video, but primarily audio is what I've seen and, and rely on on a regular basis for uh, entering trance states or altered states of consciousness. And drum and bass, just as just as one example among so many others, drum and bass is excellent for entering trance states, altering consciousness, uh, or just simply zoning into what you're doing. In my case, it might be writing or programming. In anyone else's case, it's whatever they're doing. But my my point is is that with streaming media, it is possible to replicate or create, for that matter. Uh, shamanic experiences. It doesn't mean you're a shaman or anyone's particularly a shaman, but it means that you are uh, you are benefiting from human from humanity's lineage. You are benefiting from our disposition as a species, and that is oh so potent and oh so incredible. It's wonderful. In my opinion, it is. I am very grateful that our species is is open to drumming. And open, open to uh, rhythmic. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, there's, there's a kind of syncopated rhythmic music creates altered states of consciousness. And with with Wi-Fi, with 5G phones, anyone, almost anyone is able to listen to that kind of music almost wherever they are, and that is unprecedented in in my understanding of our species. Um, there's that we we live in such a rich time such a potent time and despite the the chaos and the 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 what i would describe as the counter movement to that to that energy we still have access to those technologies and that 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 is at this moment i think the fuel for our future uh, absolutely and i i just Thank you. I, I love that you brought up using drum and bass for altered states of consciousness because that's what I do too. I'll even use modern music. I'm not knocking it. The ancient Rom, Rom stuff, it just doesn't do it for me. You, you, you know, for me, that it, that's what Rave does. It just brings you up into a trance. You know, these looping drum beats, these bass flows, you can flow with the music. 
move your body to it. I hear this, I'm like, now I know how to move my body to it or do a banishing or anything like that. Do you do anything like try and connect or access to the internet if you consider that to be part of the astral, something independent, if you want to elaborate there, by all means? Sure. Uh, I, I definitely consider the internet to be either, a, I, I'm not exactly certain what what the internet is creating or is connected to, but I am absolutely confident that there is a portal through the internet to a broader spectrum or universe or uh, diaspora of energy and spirit that we have not had either for a very long time or ever before. And the internet is um, almost freely available. It's very affordable considering what it is. It's expensive, yes. Every month you have to, I have to pay, and so many millions of others, tens, hundreds of millions of others of people have to pay a monthly internet bill. But the result from that is uh, just so much opportunity. And within that opportunity, is access to, as you've described, the information model of magic. Uh, I don't think, I, I do describe the way I've used the technologies of our time for magic as being the information model, but I really honestly don't perceive the models as having changed since ancient Egypt. Uh, it's the same, it's the same dialogue. It's just different manifestations of the exact same human energy and potential. And I think that the human, that we as humans are uh, lightning rods for what is taking place. Our emotions, our thinking, our physical gestures, our wellness are all conditions of our connection to something s substantially greater than us. And, and I'm happy to elaborate on any of that, but that is... That is what I think is happening right now. Uh, I mean, if you're drawing yourself, I'm going to have to rewatch this and, you know, do the edits myself. I'm probably going to want to have you on for a few more shoots because there's a million wormholes we can go down. We've almost been going for a little bit about an hour. Um, if we're okay, we're probably going to go about an hour and a half, depending on how the conversation goes. Um, but before anything else, uh, I'll give you a choice. You want to talk a little bit, elaborate on shamanism, or do you want to talk a little bit about... Bitcoin, NFTs, stuff like that. Let's do shamanism first, and then let's That's come back good. to Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, there's, they're both very, in my opinion, connected to each other. Uh, uh, I think so. I think there's a lot, as I said, between if you are into chaos magic theory, let's just say, between Bitcoin and chaos magic. But what is shamanism to you? Because at least in my experience, and I'm not putting anyone down, i become very jaded with that term because it just seems like, you know, another empty-headed label. Like, in the 2000s now when people say I'm a punk rocker or whatever, it's like, oh, it's just another label. What is shamanism to you? That's, that's a great question. Shamanism to me is the human condition. Uh, shamanism is the root of all religion and spirituality. Uh, shamanism is native to every human population. It's not explicitly uh, a... Uh, I, I forget the name of the original tribe where the word shaman comes from, but shamanism is not exclusive to any one particular uh, population of human. It is what we do as humans, and anything beyond that is elaboration. So to me, shamanism is uh, what we are. It's who we are. It's, it's what we do. Uh, it's, it's how we communicate with the future and the past in the present. Uh, there, there are a lot of ways we could go down that path, but I think the best way of describing it is shamanism is humanity. Okay. Um, I definitely like that answer. Did, did you find a lot of that deals with being a thought leader and dealing with the fact we just are in that expansion? Because really for me, shamanism, I guess would say fundamentally, is just going off into the abyss or the forest and coming back and finding something of use for its people. So that could be being a philosopher, that could be being a techno geek or exploring Bitcoin or all these new things. So um, I do like that answer. Now, do you draw from ideas of traditional paganism, shamanism, magic, and how do you incorporate that into your practice beyond what we discussed? Sure. Uh, I am not a shaman. 
I don't claim to be anything in particular. What I do claim is an interest in the subject matter. I, I have no authority over shaman or shamanism, but from my understanding, from the encounters and the training that I've had, uh, what we are experiencing today is a manifestation of what has happened for the last 150,000 years of humanity. It's not new. It's, it is certainly new, but it is not novel. It is not uh, unprecedented. The only thing that is the, the most important thing that is unique about today's world is the scale and the immediacy of what is happening. Uh, to go to be a shaman, in my understanding of what a shaman actually is, requires a lot of training, requires a uh, disposition, requires a cataclysmic event in one's life. Being a shaman is not a simple thing. It's not casual. It's not something that a lot of people actually choose. The spirits choose the people, uh, from my understanding of what shamanism is. So it's not, it's not to be taken lightly, and that's definitely why I claim not to be a shaman. I am, I am interested in shamanic practices, and I am interested in what shamans have to say. And what I'm saying here is what I've learned from people who have suffered for 25 years under the tutelage of another shaman to be able to say, yes, I am confidently a shaman. But not only that, I don't claim to be a shaman. My community calls me a shaman. My, the people I serve come to me and tell me thank you for being a shaman. I think uh, that's one of the more important elements of quote unquote being a shaman is being called by your community as to be a shaman, as a shaman. That's it's sort of like a uh, a nickname, if you will. Right, right, right. I, I mean, don't let me label you. I'd say in a way what you're doing is my definition of that or my current understanding. While I don't like the labels myself because it's as the other speakers you know on the channel have pointed out, it's become another empty-headed fashion statement. You know, like most of the self-proclaimed shaman in my eyes are not shaman, and I think one of the reasons we're having this big expansion is humanity tried to keep us in the past for a while. But, um, that being said, do you have any experience with NFT, crypto, I think it's, of course, having gotten my feet wet, but would you like to elaborate on that at all and how it might connect to magic? Because I just noticed parallels between like sigils and crypto coins, NFTs and servitors, but just allow yourself to flow freely here because we're in your turn. Sure. Uh, I, I am not an expert on crypto or cryptocurrencies, but I have definitely invested my attention in and to a certain degree, my, my income in cryptocurrency. Uh, the ability to create a crypto coin is open source and open source technology. It's called FOSS open uh, free open source software and to the best of my understanding the crypto mentality the crypto coin uh, hypothesis is that multiple coins unlimited numbers of coins can be created for alternative value systems or uh, sources of uh, storing value and i think that i mean if you want to talk about a bucket to store karma or a, 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 a trough to store a magical energy or, or prana or louche, I think cryptocurrency is, I'm going to use a word that is legitimate, but is kind of controversial. It's titillating. It is absolutely real. And it is something that major institutions have spent hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars on investing within. There, there is, I don't know the name of the investment company or the, the investment firm, but when Twitter still had an open API, I would use a tool that would show me that there were hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on Bitcoins to collect tens of thousands of them uh, as quickly as possible. And that those investments were made by very, very serious people who find that cryptocurrency is a, and here's my point, is a wonderful reserve of value, money, uh, energy, whatever you want to call it, uh, louche, whatever you want to call it. Um, cryptocurrency is, uh, man, it, it's, it's a game changer, but it depends entirely on how, um, at this point, the laws are established. Because I think, I, I think we are entering a 
controversial period of cryptocurrency where it is being challenged by the authority mm -hmm. and being made uh it could potentially be made illegal in the united states in the next few years it just depends on how how the dynamics of of power change in this country or in the world for that matter but um cryptocurrency is a public ledger of power it's it's a very uh oh man i i want to say fun and interesting but also at the same time intimidating is probably the best word intimidating source of alternative forms of value transfer and that's what the dollar is supposed to be. The United States uh, dollar is supposed to be an, uh, a universal form of transacting not only uh, one gift or one commodity to another, but energy and power and influence. If I give you $100 billion, I expect something significant in return. Uh, I think Elon Musk bought Twitter for something like $55 billion. That, that right there is um indicative as as i think he is in charge of or he's he's a major proponent of cryptocurrencies the dog a d-o-g-a doge coin he is playing in a major future market right now and that that's just one example that's just a single example you could have uh, coinbase as another example of a major player in cryptocurrency the federal government of the united states of the uk of russia of china definitely china where i think they have outlawed bitcoin or at least made it very difficult um it is absolutely a form of uh energy transfer and that is magical uh one way or another okay okay now before we get into some associations i've noticed do you have any reasons and if you want to omit the fifth on this or plead the fifth on this with all the censorship going on i'm not going to take it personally do you think there's any specific reasons countries are trying to ban crypto? Certainly. certainly, certainly. It, it, it's the same reason why they've banned previous attempts at currency creation. It's it's a, it's an extracurricular uh, outside form of value that has entered a system that is a closed loop system. And the closed loop system is the US dollar, which I work every day for, or well, I work, I work almost every day for, as most people in this country and the world one way or another do, especially in the United States. The United States dollar is how we pay our rent for the most part. Um, I think the reason why cryptocurrencies are being battled against now is because one, it's convenient for authorities to do so, and two, because it does provide a competition. And, and I think that that is something that the statement um, winners don't compete, winners dominate, something to that extent. Um, that is, I think, the reason why cryptocurrencies are being battled against. Well, I think that that's my loose and premature understanding. And that, that's one thing I noticed it gave the individual the ability to say, if I don't have faith in the U.S. dollar or whatever, there's this other alt currency system. I can now attach to it's attached to the world and that would be really a threat to someone that wants to keep you pinned into their system from what i understand yes um, now, now that's very volatile but for me from a philosophical standpoint what made me interested was beyond oh it's future it's a skill i believe all that <clears throat> i gotta do my homework here as i said this is scary because this sounds crazy to try out and be kind of the crash dummy so to speak but what it said to me is the fact that people are trying this shows that people are losing faith in the u.s dollar and that's a problem because bridging into what i was gonna say um in a lot of ways crypto is kind of a meta perspective or meta realization of how val perceived value and economy works akin to how chaos magic claims to be this meta perspective on how all occultism works if that makes any sense sure yes it does uh and if you want my response i would say that uh in the future there is going to be more enforcement of the the dominance of the u.s dollar as the form of universal currency i think the the president of mexico who is obviously a, a uh, 
Uh, the country is obviously a neighbor of the United States, has come out recently and said that he supports the United States dollar as being the quote-unquote universal currency for value. And I think that, that that has been driven, that kind of opinion is uh, what power struggles are waged over. But that that's not, I'm not knocking the U.S. dollar. I, I'm an American citizen. I, I, I work for the dollar. <laughs> Uh, in terms of paying my rent, but uh, cryptocurrencies definitely have their their battle laid out for them. And I think that savvy crypto investors or savvy policymakers or power players understand that better than I do. Well, I think, I... That, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, please. please. Okay. Uh, I, I, I just think that right now is is the beginning of something substantial in terms of the release of energy the ex the the expansion of value uh, the expression of power is perhaps a better way of saying it uh, we are just at the beginning of the next uh, great human i don't want to call it a conflict but i want to call it a challenge the great human challenge is how we perceive energy and that has been true since the beginning of linear transmission of electricity uh we could have had a very different model of uh, electricity transmission we could have had we could have had free universal technology or free universal energy but we have now linear transmission telephone lines type electrical transmission that was uh buffer that was buffeted by uh i think his name was edison and that's 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 just what we have. That's that's the reality we we live in, and we consider it normal. But we have another opportunity today. Uh, maybe decentralized is the word I want to use. But we have a very real chance to create a substan a holistically different future for our species because today is so so potent. The the days we live in are unlike anything i am, am aware of since the collapse of the roman empire as best i'm aware maybe maybe there's something like the french revolution that is just as important but we live in very very valuable times uh, i mean i agree scary yet a valuable um scary yet extremely exciting times i'm just gonna say um one thing i know this sounds negative but i was telling someone is a good way to look at this is once again, it, it's kind of like in the, in the past three years, we're kind of going through the bubonic plague meets a potential Great Depression meets potential World War Three meets potential Louisiana Purchase expansion at the technological level all at the same time. And that is, that's something you just really need to sit there and shut the fuck up and let process for a while. It's like, oh shit, you know, so... um definitely now my theory on crypto is and i could be wrong is that governments don't want this because if there's interconnected economies it pretty much proves it's counterintuitive to start global conflicts or war and i think world trade brings that to the um stage why go to conflict with another country when they have oil you have this resource over here nobody benefits from that except the powers that be you know and i'm not saying we should just get rid of government either but um, I, I have noticed that. Now, I don't know if you do chaos magic at all. I'm going to assume you do some, but I, I'm assuming that that, what I got was beyond the meta perspective, the techniques of chaos magic, and at least even the base understanding of crypto, these things just seem like a chaos magician's wet dream if they want to get on board with it, right? Like making a sigil, it's a coin. From what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, a coin is you make a symbol, you're filling it with dead space and energy, you're sending it out, right? And trying to harness the value. There's your nothing is true, everything is permitted. NFTs to me, uh, I'm, I'm very confused on what those are, you can fill me in, but those seem like almost servitors where you can make one and then there's several little bits you can give to different people did, did, did you notice any of that or see any potential or in terms of the relationship between crypto nfts and chaos magic yeah. uh, i would say uh it, your observation about nfts being servitors uh that's very astute in my opinion um they're supposed to be one of a kind 
They're supposed to be uh, transferable, but permanently so, so that the ownership, it's, I think it's all about ownership over the NFT, uh, so that the, uh, the instance that is created is owned solely by one person and in, and in the digital world, that is uncommon, perhaps you could say, uh, where a file is downloaded 100 million times or wh whatever number of times, and it's the same file or a replicate of the same file. With NFTs, it's, it, that's not supposed to be possible. Uh, with cryptocurrency and chaos magic, uh, I have seen a number of coins recently come into existence that express a desire in reinvesting the, the quote-unquote profits or value of that coin in technology like there's i think it's called the transhuman coin thc transhuman coin and the transhuman coin is supposed to gain value from collective buy-in and the the value that is harvested from certain coin owners is then reinvested in revolutionary technologies like like aging anti-aging technologies etc uh but yes yes i would agree that there is a direct connection between uh chaos magic and crypto and nfts but it is um there's some specifics written into the code of both kinds of technologies crypto and nfts that make them uh improvable i think that they could be improved upon in an open source kind of way um as to what those improvements would be, that's that's a matter of uh, of future innovator future innovators to 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 make happen. But I see that crypto and uh, NFTs are bedrocks for something for for future generations of technology. And I think that's probably, in my opinion, and in my perspective, that is probably the most important part of crypto and NFTs is that they are the bedrock from which something much greater will spawn. Well, um, I mean, the way I see it, I'm just arguing, or I've been wondering rather how many people are magicianing um, behind closed doors that are getting in on this and or how many, whether they be techno mages, if you want to call it that, or um, blockchain wizards are unconscious magicians to some state or another unconscious unconscious magicians that is probably the dominant proportion in my observation i don't want to claim any anything is fact but in my observations that is absolutely the case um in my observations most people who are engaging in crypto and nfts especially when they are designs or obscure are engaging in not only uh, chaos magic, but are engaging in, um, what's the word I want to use? Uh, transmutation of a divine kind. It's, the, it's like apotheosis or uh, the word escapes me. But the, my, my point is, is that uh, these unconscious magicians are still creating magic. And that magic is abundant today. And, you know, I, I, I pay a lot of attention to what, uh, you might call the religious right wing says, and they are, they are, uh, I don't want to say they're going, they're chaotic about what is going on right now with paganism and magic and technology. They are talking about it very publicly and very, with much concern. And from their perspective, I can understand why they would be concerned because it is so potent because it is happening everywhere. And I've been on – what really convinced me that AI, magic, technology, ma uh, occultism is happening is during COVID, uh, I would attend these online meetup groups from all over the country. And some, sometimes uh, out of a group of 50 people, someone would say, yeah, I study magic and AI. And I have, I have not said anything that would promote that. No one has said anything that would provoke that. But people are talking about it uh, on a distributed basis uh, with each other, often enough for someone like myself to hear it. And that gave me, in my, in my disposition and worldview, that gave me so much hope that uh, there, is, there, there are the right people who are paying attention and that are seeing this happen and are interested in, per, in pursuing it. That, 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 I think, is 
there there is something so magical happening right now with technology and uh, human energy or loosh or uh, uh, or capacity, human capacity. There's something so potent happening right now that to not talk about it is to ignore it. If you if you if you have observed it, which I believe I have, that's just my opinion. But if I if I have s seriously observed shamanism, magic, technology, and human potential merging, right now it is happening amongst primarily the youth, people who are uh, the most curious, you might say. But it is happening everywhere. Okay. Okay. Um, would you like to elaborate at all, like on what the uh, the old Christians or the old right or any any of this? Or because I happen to agree with you, I just don't know how to conceptualize it. Because for me, it's very you see this or you don't. I'm not saying that to be a jerk. Oh, I totally I mean, I you know what I'm saying. Like the NFTs yeah. and servitor connection, you see it or you don't. Totally, I, I I can appreciate that, and to be, uh, I'm I, I'm a gentleman. I like to be polite, especially in public, and I would say that the best way to describe the way the uh, quote unquote right hand path or the right is ex is experiencing the rise of techno paganism is with panic. It is uh, we didn't maybe they didn't expect it as individuals. Um, maybe even as leadership, they didn't expect it, but it is happening and they are reacting to it. They have observed it correctly and they are in their context uh, forming a response to it. And that is with a cultural revolution. Uh, that is with a dampening effect. That is with a limitate, that is with uh, gatekeeping, as I've seen posted in article headlines. We need to gatekeep American culture to prevent tech technology from expanding into paganism that's essentially uh the the, the modality that i've seen the quote-unquote religious right um working with to respond to what we're talking about well for me that seems impossible at this point now i don't understand that logic at all so i don't have um much to say there other than you know, like, I consider um, almost New Age to be a side effect of the work the Chaos Magician did, if you read those books, you know. Um, they thought this would be the era of Chaos Magic. They say, and these are influence I had, like Phil Hines said, it, he doesn't believe that Chaos Magic will ever become the forefront of the magical practice. And I'm like, are, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I get you wrote this book, I get you been doing this longer, but I look around and I'm like... Yeah, this is a chaos magic's playground. Like, New Agers are basically unconscious chaos magician. They're just making up their own meaning, doing shit. Not to make this about New Age, but with that being said, um, do you find that the old definitions of magic are outdated? We need to expand and evolve with the times. I mean, we've said yes, but I guess what are some tips then for anyone in your eyes? That's a great question. Is um, my my number one tip is to read as widely and as deeply as you can. That is how I've gained the the majority of my education ex outside of experimentation and actually practicing magic. Is reading the opinions of multiple people. Uh, I believe you've had. I believe his name is pronounced Andre Vitimus. Uh, you've had him on your your channel, and that was one of the interviews that draw me that drew me to your channel. Was uh, pop magic and the creation of superhero gods that that is in in my uh in my opinion i'm just one individual but in my opinion is totally legitimate uh theology that is that is one way of of garnering results you could say um it, it, we do live in a, in a chaos magic magician's playground and to 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 not to deny that or to disagree with that is totally legitimate legitimate but it is um in my opinion incorrect well i, I mean I, i'm glad you like the shoot and while I, while i like that stuff for me it's become more the challenge of explaining to someone is instead of why is this possible i fail to see how it's not possible but um you, you know i i do think the magician needs to evolve what i mean by that is not throw out the wisdom of the old traditions but as you know 
using a pop magic analogy, give everything a reboot right now, which is kind of seems to be an ongoing kind of topic in this episode. We are very much in the gritty reboot era, which I think sounds cool when you see it in the movies, and it's a different thing when you experience, but whether it's the old Christians or whatever, as we all know with magic, it's be careful what you wish for, because you probably will get it. Can you handle it when it comes? Yes, I'm shaking my head. Yes, uh, there, there. When Trump was elected in 20, I think it was, what is, 2023, 2016, Trump was elected, I believe, mm-hmm. and the, um, the, the posts on on minor subreddits or small subreddits that I encountered s- quoted the Terence McKenna philosophy of emanizing the eschaton which means basically feeding the magical disposition of the universe. And the problem that these posters had was that someone knew that that was going on and took fundamental advantage over that with, it's not, it's not to say that it's right or wrong. That's not what my, my, my uh, statement is about, but the, the demigod Keck, the Trump presidency, the absolute, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fervor of support for those individuals, if you want to consider a meme uh, a being, um, s- came from this desire to expand, came from this promotion and desire to expand uh, the magical energy that is available for tapping into. And, and I firmly believe that the magical energy, which I think can be paralleled with Lush, which is a prana, which is just basically the off-put energy of humankind, has been tapped into by, uh, you could probably say countless, but many major powers know what's going on. And I think that 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 was uh, used to bring about change that we've seen, for sure. Right. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of people have a lot of strong opinions about Trump and politics, and as you know, we're content creators, so I don't want to poke the bear with the boomstick here, so to speak. But one thing I think that love Donald Trump, hate Donald Trump, um, I-, I think in a lot of ways he is the emanation of the trickster, and he makes us Americans ask if you hate him just for example. I'm not asking you to explain, but it really makes us look at ourselves and say, well, wait. Whether we want to be mad at Trump or Congress or this or that, at least in theory, we elect these people and it makes you ask, like as a results magician, how well are our beliefs really fucking working right now? And what needs to change? And I'm going to argue that's a very, I don't want to say chaos magic, that's a very, let's say, postmodern or or eclectic magic or spiritual question we're going through right now as a collective. And that's the same thing with magic. Um, What is important still what needs to be updated what needs to be preserved and no one really have seems to have the answers because as you said it's a it's an uncertain time now um one question i'd like to ask you is you were talking about reading in books and stuff and a lot of people you know they always talk about the magical books and stuff and i feel like what are some, or the question I want to ask her, what are some books that could be old, new, philosophy, economics, whatever, that people should be reading that aren't occult books? That's a great question. I, re- I try to read six days a week, uh, taking a break on Sunday. But the books that I'm staring at right now, I have a, 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 a little bookshelf of, of personal books that I've read. And I would say the number one book to, that's a great question. The non-occult book for, for techno, technomancy. There are two answers that I could give for that. One would be, uh, I think it's called the, let me see if I can find the title, but it's basically a companion book to cyberpunk culture. And that book itself explains a lot of how uh, you could say underground technology and uh, innovation culture has evolved over the past 40 years since early 80s uh another book might be oh man it's uh w p w pasolka uh wrote a book called american cosmic that's another great that's an excellent book american cosmic talks about the intersection of religion 
UFOs and technology and spirituality. That that by itself is um, uh, 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 I don't want to call it a battleground. You could call it a um, a field for planting seeds right now. There are many people planting seeds in that field right now. The intersection of UFOs or UAPs, uh, unidentified aerial uh, phenomena, and religion and technology and spirituality in the United States. That That is where most of, well, not most, because most, I think, happen in the United Kingdom, but that is where much of the dialogue is happening is around that subject matter in the United States. The United States is not the whole world, obviously, but uh, it is perhaps at, at this moment the most powerful player in the, in the world uh, for the time being. Um, so uh, the two books I would recommend are, uh, I think it's like Rutgers Companion to Cyberpunk Culture, and the second one is American Cosmic by <laughs> David Pasolka. Okay. Now, not to put you, um, or my next question is, any not traditional occult books from any era, they could be fiction, they could be a philosophy book, an example for me would be, um, to hit this home is, I say, you want to understand chaos, magic, Satanism, read the introductory books, read the classics, then go to Frederick Nietzsche to get this stuff, any other outside books that you would recommend any magician read? Definitely. There is one fiction book that has, well, there are a number of fiction books, but the number one fiction book that kind of opened my eyes to the modern world is called The Celestine Prophecy. Uh, I don't remember the, the gentleman's name who wrote it, but if you are to Google The Celestine Prophecy, there's a movie, there's a book, there are multiple books to read on that subject, but that book talks about how ancient uh, prophecy and modern technology are merging into the new world based on human choices. And that is exactly, in my opinion, what is what is most important, is understanding the past, seeing the future, and making the correct choices today. So the Celestine Prophecy. You, you ready for a um, Bolsey question? Absolutely. Any magic books or magic things you would like think people should stop doing just because it's a waste of dead space maybe because these things are outdated there's just something better came along or uh, any, even in your own life it's like you know what i just this that was a waste of my time in my yeah i can answer that question and yes i think the the waste of time in my worldview i'm because i know there are some people with very strong opinions that would disagree with this is ritual magic i don't agree i don't i don't see much value in my reality with ritual magic uh high magic or uh uh theurgy i think it's called uh it's more for me it's more about on the ground everyday stuff and i think that uh, there's it's not to it's not to say that that stuff's wrong or incapable or 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 something that you shouldn't absolutely do because it's quote unquote sinful but i i find that in today's world mundane magic is more powerful than ritual magic so if you want the real cutting edge uh there's so much change happening today it's more about the skills than it is about the tradition so learning, learning, learning is the way to go forward, whereas relying on um, memetics from the past is uh, a burden, in my opinion. That's just, you don't have to agree with me, but if I was to give any advice on what to be doing, it would be to be learning and innovating. So ritual magic might not be the best gate to uh, your best results. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, I, I partially agree. I do some ritual magic for, like, the pop culture magic, I will, because I understand why I'm doing said actions. But even so, from a time resource standpoint, it just adds up. Like, if you work through the book Modern Magic by Donnie Craig, it's a good book. I think people should check it out, familiarize themselves with the um, concepts, the ideas. But you could spend that time, like reading something else. I know a lot of my audience and gallery are magic fans, which is great. Their whole thing is few minute magic. It can work. But I, I just don't understand the train of thought. Oh, I did did the Goetic Words of Power. Now I'm going to read about Boone after. At least Spear said for me. No, this is when you go read books about money or other things now. 
this is why you're doing it, and I'm not bragging. I, I've had older spirits come through after the pot magic, and they're like, we want to hang out with you because we want to see what you can do because we want to touch new people too. So I I happen to agree with you to an extent. Um, ritual magic, yeah, I'll do some. I'll do some summoning circles to stay connected to that current. I look at it as a, like, you know, turning on the Wi-Fi every day. But I, I, I definitely do agree there and the people that can do that are professional magician who have that life they've earned it but i just don't feel that's for most people especially when you are gonna have to work a lot of jobs or money's tight or whatever so okay um now my next question is we, this kind of been the whole essence of this the episode i guess you'll say but what are some changes you would like to see in the modern occult or spiritual communities here? Let's just say metaphysical communities. That's a great question. Um, I've experienced, I, I've engaged with the modern occult community for probably eight, seven, eight years on the internet. And much of the response has been in terms of my, my, questioning about technology, my introducing uh, technology. Our occult on Reddit is the most fascinating and diverse community of occultists I've ever come across. And the re what I would recommend to those people who are listening from said community or in others like it is to <laughs> really be curious. Uh, that's, that's really what it is. And it's when you get down to your traditions you block you might block yourself out from future innovations that allow you not only to stay current but allow you to stay most effective that's that i could be wrong about that and there are probably people who hear my voice right now saying he's a fool and that's fine i i have nothing nothing against tradition but if you want to be as effective as possible or as powerful as possible or as transmutational as possible i think staying on the cutting edge of magic is uh the way to be and right and we've talked about this throughout the entire interview or conversation it's 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 what's happening right now is all you have to do is type in the word technomancy technomancy.com let me let me confirm that for you real quick because this is the resource that convinced me to technomancy101.com if you go to that website, I am not affiliated with that website in any way, but if you go to technomancy101.com, you will find that uh, someone has put together a very uh, beautiful resource on technology and magic. So it's happening. And that's what convinced me to start a particular subreddit that ended up with almost 6,000 6, members, our cyber delanot. Uh, I, I, I'm no longer the the, the uh, moderator of that subreddit, but it it still exists, and it's the intersection of psychedelics, technology, and magic. And this resource, if it does nothing other, nothing else for anyone, but for you, as the individual listening to this, it should show you that there is something happening with this stuff, and that you can either be in despair which might be the case, or you could be in uh, 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 encouraged, which I was. And it, it convinced me that, okay, fine, I can finally, finally take this seriously as a magical, quote-unquote, profession because someone else has paved the ground before me or, or laid the groundwork before me. So it's, to answer your original question of what I would recommend, it's be curious because the leading edge of magic is not woo-woo, it's not foo-foo, and it's not garbage. It is uh, taking form very quickly, and it, it embraces the past. It does not discard the past. It embraces the past and requires a little bit of new learning. You could, you could say the new learning is plugging in a USB cord to a USB slot and having a peripheral a PC device to control magic intent. It, it, it could be that simple, or it could be as complex as learning C++, which I do not know. C++ is uh, a very powerful 
programming language, which I believe most uh, or a lot of very powerful software programs are based on. My point is just to be curious and open to change. Uh, otherwise, it becomes a religion and a dogma, uh, as we've discussed at the very beginning of this, pro uh, of this program, um, which is not necessarily ideal. It can be ideal, but it's not necessarily ideal. Well, uh, I mean, in a certain sense, you're preaching to the choir. I obviously love magic, but I think the real gifts are creative problem solving, thinking outside the box. You know, people like the tarot. That's great. I like the tarot, but after a while, you're just able to read people's situations, pattern analysis. And those are the real gifts of this and the more important skills just the meditation the ability to control your state and you know call in spirits or things like that but you know even how to work with the elements to break down a gold deconstruction these these are all things coming from me I, i've had spirits say i want you to write a resume or so you know how to do that for your life or even you know being a youtuber that helps with confidence that helps with communication connecting to different people these are all skills that people need and i think in a lot of, a lot of times i'm not going to say it's better or worse but that is what gets left out as you said in um exchange for the fights about the angels versus the demons and all this or that maybe i'm doing it wrong i don't have those problems if anything my response on magic has been spirits are showing up for me because it's like hey i want to fucking evolve here too i've been the same way for two thousand years batman got three reboots in the last decade what the fuck man can you help me reboot you know so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do think that is a beautiful observation thank you now just some final questions here um what would you say the three most important technological skills magic or not are that any viewer here should start exploring or learning for the sake of even their survival fuck magic fuck fascination or fuck magic fuck fascination just for the sake of their survival being able to keep up with their lives that's a great question uh i would say number one if i was to be if i was to be ideal i would say number one is programming just so that you can create your own simple software programs or understand what other programs are doing so spending a little time uh, studying the philosophy of computer programming, even that gives you a gateway into the world of technology. Uh, number two would probably be encryption. Uh, that's uh, security is very important. Privacy is very important. I use encryption every day for my passwords, for my internet connection. Uh, and number three, uh, I would say soft skills, social skills, uh, learning how to communicate on the internet and being willing to accept uh, disagreement because a lot of, well, not necessarily because, but a lot of conflict on the internet might occur from people not being tolerant or capable of experiencing disagreement. So it's, it's one is programming, two is encryption, and three is soft skills. And, and those, those three skills, if you had a, if anyone has a competency in those three skills, they probably are employed. So it's it's it works outside of magic. It works outside of just private internet use. Uh, a VPN, a virtual private network. Uh, I use Air VPN on my connection, and I'm I'm not affiliated in any way. There's no there's no reseller. There's no uh, benefit to me except for to promote the tools that I use. Uh, I use open source tools for encryption. I use open source tools for uh, social media, and I use uh, open source tools for information gathering. And maybe a fourth tool would be OSINT, uh, open source intelligence gathering. And that that is just simply meaning putting patterns together from publicly available information on the internet. I, with those four skills, OSINT, uh, you could say OPSEC, which is operational security, which would be encryption, soft skills, and programming. You have become a leading citizen in today's modern world. And a lot of people who disagree with the power of technology already have these skills because they, they realize how important they are. So it's across the board. And I can give you uh, a dozen tools if you want, like uh, um, for your personal PC. Let's. I'm assuming that your listeners uh, live on Linux or Windows, 
And the two tool, the one tool for remaining uh, especially clean is Bleach Bit on uh, PC and Linux. I use that on a regular basis, and it basically deletes all the files. It permanently cleans your hard drive of unnecessary files and data. It's that kind of stuff. It's just the ability to understand. Really, it's about understanding what your computer's doing. But if you need to be skill specific, it's OSINT, programming, encryption, and uh, soft skills. I think that would answer your question. Well, I mean, these are beautiful answers. And we'll just have a couple more, and then we'll wrap this up if that's okay. But uh, what I liked about just what you're saying, and I apologize, I wish I had more knowledge in this stuff so I could elaborate here. But these sound like skills that, once again, going back to cross training, coming full circle, whether or not you get or tech savvy. These are skills you should be able to incorporate in your magic. You said encrypting secret alphabets, being able to keep your shit secret. Um, I know a big one for me right now is that if the skill is not useful in both magic and mundane life, it's probably not worth my fucking time right now. Because our time is, is fucking valuable. Now, my second to last question is, if people are looking to start a podcast here or anything or paint their own, do you think they should? And what are some things you'd like them to know to get started? Can you repeat that question one more time? If people were looking to start a podcast or some kind of platform, any pixels of wisdom you wish you could tell your former self so they can avoid certain headaches we may have ran into? Sure. Uh, there are, in, in terms of, this is, again, just my experience and opinion. But if you want to start an explicitly audio podcast, the best hosting company, the, mo the, the most effective, simple, uh, not bare bones, but robust hosting platform is Libsyn.com. Uh, liberated syndication. So L-I-B-S-I-N-S-Y-N.com. They will do the absolute heavy lifting for you. All you have to do is create the content, upload it, and... Uh, create the meta metadata meta data, and you will have a uh, wide broadcast. If I had figured that out when I first started, I would uh, have had a much greater effect. I went into silence because uh, I felt that that's what spirit was telling me to do. I, I stopped my podcasting and YouTube video creation because I needed to uh, calm down as it was. I had gotten too far into the, uh, conspiracy world and too far into the uh, political opinions. But if I had figured that out, I would probably still have, if I had figured that out earlier, I probably would still have my podcasts and have a thousand episodes on each of them. Uh, Cause it was 10 years ago that I, that I quit making uh, audio programs, but libsyn.com, very affordable and uh, super effective. And then of course there's YouTube. YouTube is, in my opinion, by default, uh, the second place you should post all of your audio content or video content for that matter. Okay. Okay. Any tips on just starting getting over those hangups or? Yeah. Uh, I, I was recommended by a professor when I was in college to attend Toastmasters. And if you're not familiar with Toastmasters, it's basically a uh, and, and in, <laughs> it, it sounds crazy, but but it's an international community of people who come together to encourage and promote, nurture is the right word, nurture the development of public speaking skills in individuals who participate. Toast Masters. And you're almost certainly likely to find an online Toast Masters group near you or anywhere for that matter. Because with this, with, with without mentioning the name of the, of the, of the, the thing that happened recently, because of that, uh, we've had uh, many people, many organizations, many clubs is the right word to go online and you can access them from anywhere. And that's my main point. Uh, if you want to get better at public speaking and confidence and feeling like you're present when you're in front of a group of people, uh, Toastmasters changed my life and I would expect given their uh, longevity and popularity, they'll change your life too. Okay, thank you. Um, and now my final question is, is one, based on your experiences right now, because you're very much a future thinking magician, I thank you for coming on. Um, 
this was a real treat, by the way. It didn't go the way I anticipated, but uh, I think that we got some important knowledge nonetheless. What would be, I guess, your core philosophy or your insight you would like to leave behind for the future, whether it be about magic or technology or the merging of the two, just as, you know, Frederick Nietzsche left behind the philosophy of going beyond good and evil. That's what's on my mind. You know, all these quote unquote gurus, while I don't like that word, like to leave something behind for their people. What would your message be? Fight for open access. Fight for, not fight like physically, but make your contributions to information that is publicly available because that's how the world changes is when something is disseminated quickly. The, the printing press changed the world. The internet changed the world. The next evolution of all of that kind of expression will further change the world. I would say that if you want to really, if, if you were to live in the future that I and many others see, it's to fight for open access. And if there's a second uh, philosophy, it's cognitive liberty that's when i learned what cognitive liberty means which basically states the freedom to change state at will uh, as you see fit as long as it's not impacting or hurting other people is a fundamental human right so open access and cognitive liberty and i'd even go further and say there's a third and that's morphological freedom on the internet we can be anyone we can be anything and that Morphological freedom, basically, it's really used among people who are, quote unquote, and I, and I say this with respect, I say this with deep respect, furries, people who believe they are animal spirits in a human body. I have great respect for those people and the work that they're doing to protect morphological freedom. You can be anything, you can change your consciousness into whatever you want it to be, and you can access the knowledge on how to do it. With those three criteria, I think uh, we have a not a utopia, but we have a more ideal situation than if we didn't have those. And that's for so many, so many fundamental reasons in my consciousness. Um, those are critical. Okay. Well, I, I like those answers. I don't have an opinion on furries. And some people may not agree with those means, audience. But all I want to say in closing is what he said is that if you can't grasp the meta points of what he's saying to bring this full circle you don't understand what this channel's about and you don't understand what chaos magic philosophy is because i'd say those are morphology the ability to change at will that is all that belief shifting banter in a nutshell so unless you have anything to add um brett i'm just gonna thank you for coming on and we're gonna call this one a wrap because you've been generous with your time i i sincerely appreciate uh your your willingness to have me on uh if i was to close with anything i would be first of all thank you uh to yourself for bringing me on and second of all it's to be brave to those who listen to this uh right now we need not fear we don't necessarily need fearless and uncalculated people but we need brave uh people who are willing to take uh matters into their own hands for themselves and that again that just means creating the reality you wish to see and most likely you're a good person because I believe in the goodness of humanity, the general goodness of, of humanity. <clears throat> and I think that when people take that authority into their own hands, uh, goodness comes out of it. So just, just be yourself. Uh, uh, take authority over your own situation. Total, complete responsibility for you. Even if it's not your fault or something that you did to to attract said uh, circumstance, taking complete responsi total responsibility leads to uh, discipline and liberation. And just, just be curious and open and you will thrive. That's my experience. You will thrive in today's world and in the future, so. Well, I, I couldn't agree more without scaring my audience. All I'm gonna say in closing is, I could be doing this channel for a while. Other days I wonder if the Days are numbered, but I have no regret starting it. And for me, all I'm going to say is that it's not about the reward. It's about the doing it and being able to while the time counts. So with that being said, we're going to thank Brett for coming on. If he wants, we'll have to have him back some point. Um, if nothing else, that is a wrap. And we will see you on the next shoot, whether it be a collaboration, solo content, or otherwise, audience. Thank you. Everyone take care. Have a great week. Yudai Thank you.